Welcome back guys. Well, here we are, we finally made it. I think this is part 11 of the Barn Build video series. Well, today we have to ask ourselves a question, which is how are we going to keep the rain, the snow, the sun off of our heads? And that is, we have to finish out the roof. Roof? Roof. How do you say that? Where are you from? Roof or roof? Anyhow, I've decided what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some barn metal on top of this instead of shingles or any other option. And I wanna show you the product that I'm using, so let's go ahead and do that. I've got everything unpackaged here, and this is your uh, classic rib style barn metal. Now, I had all of these cut to the lengths that I needed, and so these really long ones here are 20 foot long, and that's gonna be on the main portion of the slant on the roof. And I have all of the other components to go with it. So this is my roof caps. This right here is kind of like a uh, drip edge, I guess. Uh, everyone uses different terminology. Um, but it's going to go on the front and the back of the barn. And then these here, I believe, are referred to as corner guards. Keep in mind, I'm not a barn builder. I'm a woodworker by trade, sawmilling guy. And this came on a separate small pallet. And that is, of course, the metal for the front edge of the barn, the overhang. I got a couple other things here. I got this foamy looking stuff, which is for the roof cap. It keeps all of the rain and whatnot from getting in there. So we'll see how to do that later. <laughs> I've also got just my basic drill with a clutch on it so that I can find the right tension to put these screws. These of course are uh, have rubber washers on them and whatnot. And basically it just creates a seal so that rain can't get in there. All right, so here's my major disclaimer on this. As I've already said, I'm gonna say it again, I am not a professional barn builder. A lot of this stuff I think is commonsensical. Someone who knows how to build could do this themselves pretty easily. And I am hoping that at the end of the day we're gonna have a beautiful result. Also, I want you to know because there's so many barn build videos and all of them are about anywhere from 10 to as much as 20 minutes in length, I do intend on taking all 11 parts of these videos and condensing them into one solid video about 15 minutes long everything high speed, everything fast, so that you can see this entire process from start to finish. And hopefully a lot of people will be interested in that and you can point people to that video as well when it comes out of what I've done with this entire process. So I am excited, it's time to finally get this thing done. I've been saying that for about five videos. All right, less talking guys, more working. Let's get to business. As you can see behind me here, we've cleaned up some stuff. So spring has come, everything has blossomed and bloomed, which is wonderful, beautiful. The problem is, is that that caused a lot of problems uh, when we started putting on the back side of the barn. And I just had branches and leaves and everything in my face and it was a big, huge problem and we had to fix it. Believe it or not, the entire issue back there was because of two trees. Two trees that sort of grew and bent over sideways and then just bloomed out. <laughs> and so we got all of that taken care of. Now it's really nice back here. I can see this now as being an area where I can stack all of the lumber that is air drying and whatnot. So yeah, bonus. Well, there's one other thing that I want to talk about and that is how I'm actually putting this metal on. 
And again, I'm not a professional barn builder, so where does that lead me when I want to know something? Of course, YouTube, right? Well, I realized pretty quickly that just as in all things, the people that do this a lot have their own little squabbles and debates within themselves. And one of those has to do with how you actually screw things in. And the debate is on the flat, which would be like in this area or on this side, or on the rib, which are these points sticking up here. And so depending where you put your screws, uh, I guess is sort of a professional area of debate amongst those that are building barns. After doing my own research on it, I decided that what I'm doing is I'm screwing them all on the flat. I think that that secures the panel down the best, and that's what I'm going with. Right or wrong, uh, whether some of you agree or disagree, that's what I'm doing. Well, what we have left to do now is to continue installing the drip edge, the flashing on the back of the barn. Then after that, we have to put the really long panels on the main section of the roof. So let's get to it. As you can see behind me, we have finished the actual top of the roof. So the roof is done. Here's what we still have to do yet. This portion here right behind me, right there, I'm going to cap that with more steel on the side. And then we need to put the caps around the outside to enclose all that in, and then the final roof cap to finish everything out. So the next thing we're going to step into and start doing is getting that portion there all filled in with the steel. I am going to cut. See if I can get my finger on this right. I am going to cut around all of that brace work and whatnot and make it look nice and neat. It's coming along, isn't it? We're just this close and it's all going to be done. One, ah, ah, ah. Well, there you have it. Look at that. The top of the barn is done. Now, what I have to do, this side's done. I gotta go cut the other side now. And then it's as simple as putting that roof cap on and then I'm all done. So let's do some movie magic and fast forward and get the rest of this barn done. Uh, 
I know some of you like to see my old dog Winston here in these videos and you're probably wondering what he's up to. Well there he is. He is alive, believe it or not. <laughs> now I only have one more thing I still have to do to get this all done and that is to put the center ridge cap on top of there. So there's some things I have to do. I got these silly little foam strips that have got a little bit of adhesive on the back and those are going to get stuck on here and then that cap sits on top. As you can probably imagine those foam strips just keep the rain, the wind from blowing up under here and causing a potential problem on this little part of the roof. So that's what's left to do. Well guys, here we have it. This is the entire roof is totally done. This means there's some pretty big news and we're gonna talk about that as soon as I get down from up here. Well, as you've seen from the pictures, the exciting news that I have to share is that this barn is finally done. <laughs> you know, this has been a long video series and it has taken a long time to build because mostly I built this barn by myself. Now, I'd be amiss if I didn't acknowledge the fact that I have several good friends who were here for me at very, very critical times to help me get all of this done and it would never have been possible without them. So I'm constantly reminded of their friendship and of the grace that has been put upon me to help me finish this barn. So it's fitting that I'm out here and it's raining because that's you know the very reason that we built this barn. And as you can see behind me, I have a bunch of things that we're keeping under storage right now. I have a few hundred board feet of various species of wood behind me. And I've got behind that is the forklift, which you see has been really indispensable for most of this project. And behind the forklift there is the sawmill, the Wood Miser LT40. And that was the main reason that this barn was built, was to keep the sawmill under a roof. So it's taken a while, but we have finally called this build done. Now it is done, I'm calling it done here, but there's still a few things that I would like to get accomplished on this barn in the future. One is at least getting the back wall of the barn steeled in. I certainly have enough wood to make that happen, but I would have to purchase the steel obviously uh, to get that portion done. The other thing I would like to do is do something about the ground, the floor of this barn. Now, if I was a rich man, the thing would be concreted already. But since that's not the case, I think what I'm gonna do is hire somebody to come in here and level out the ground because there's about a foot difference from back to front. We're gonna level it out and then we're gonna dump six to eight inches of gravel in here. And that'll really help the drainage and everything else. Well, I know that a lot of you, when you first came to my channel, were attracted to the sawmill videos that I was doing. And some of you have stuck with me through thick and through thin on YouTube, watching videos and watching all of my other content that I've been able to produce. And as many of you know, I, I took almost a year off of sawmilling and didn't do any of it. And now we are knee deep and back in the game. <laughs> and so be on the lookout for future sawmill videos that are gonna come out. We're gonna have all kinds of stuff that we're gonna be cutting and we're gonna have a good time enjoying the labor, enjoying the hard work and seeing the fruits of all of that. Now, if this is your first time watching my channel, I would encourage you to go back and watch all of the other barn videos and to watch all of my sawmill and woodworking videos as well. And of course, if you feel so inclined, 
please subscribe, hit the like button, the bell, and share, and do all of those wonderful things that help me get noticed and feel appreciated on YouTube. Also, one of the last things I wanna say here is to be on the lookout for the compilation video that's gonna come out where I condense all 11 of these videos into one super video about 15 minutes long from start to finish of this entire barn being built. So be on the lookout for that. As always, guys, God bless you all. Please take care of yourselves. Until we meet again next time, goodbye.